The Angkor Thom city can be regarded as a holy city for tourists, students, researchers or believers. From first entering the southern gate to seeing multiple conglomerated temples at the core of the complex. Aside from the bigger and marvelous historical sites like the Bayon and Bapun temples, stood the other sanctuaries such as Prea Palilai Temple, Prea Pitho Temple, Kleang Temple, and Tuk Temple. These sanctuaries are perfect for those who long for peace and genuine quietness. Nevertheless, tourists can always feel free to perform any athletic activity such as walking or cycling around the temple's ground. On the other hand, owing to excellent renovation, the Southern Gate has become the most important among five Angotom Gates and the crowd's favorite to capture lively and stunning pictures of the sculptures along the entrance. Once arriving at the Southern Causeway, there are huge and mighty stone figures standing to welcome us into the city. Looking upward, we can also see the gate holds a four-faced statue which represents the four primary directions. Surprisingly, published researchers' findings suggested that the four-faced statue is actually Bodhisatt Avalokiteshvara in Mahayana Buddhism. On the contrary, the entrance stone figures are commonly known as giant tugs of war, which relatively connects to the Hindu myth of churning the ocean of milk. The Asuras, demons or titans, occupy the right-hand side of the road, whereas the divas or gods stand firmly on the left-hand side. Both of these immortal beings are standing as they pull onto a naga, used as a rope to obtain Amrit, the elixir of immortality. Furthermore, there are towering and enormous trees guiding along the way when traveling to the center of this former city. Nowadays, even though we can only see the thick and nocturnal forests at every corner, of this 9 square kilometers territory, if you can let your imagination roam back to the past, you will be amazed by how joyful and crowded the city could be. The beauty of Angotom city does not end here. If one continues to walk to the top of the fortress, it is nearly impossible to describe in words the breathtaking scenery of the watery moat and surrounding lively trees. The square laterite fortress is 7.5 meters high and encloses an area of 3 kilometers on each of its four sides. The interior of the wall is compressed with soil to form a solidified foundation. Nevertheless, this massive fortress has never failed to protect the Angotom city from the late 12th century until the present day. Usually, people would refer to this ancient city as Angotom, but smaller temples can be located at every intermediate directions as well. These smaller temples are called Jurong Temple. Northwest of the Bayuan Temple stands the Bapun Temple, which was a religious sanctuary in the 11th century. Based on previous researches, the Bapun Temple was constructed during King Uttayatachyavarmete II. The compelling factor about this temple is the bridge that acts as an entry into the temple. This sparked questions among visitors who came to Bapun. Was this temple constructed amid a body of water? However, judging from the height of the staircase and the pond's decorative stones in front of the temple, demonstrates that the area is not flooded at all. Furthermore, every one of the mythical figures in Bapun Temple is sculpted 
inside a square or rectangular frame depending on the storyline. Later on, statue of reclining Buddha was added to the west side of the temple in the 16th century. Unfortunately, Bapun Temple has been under renovation ever since 1943. It was not until July 3rd, 2011 that the temple was officially repaired and was open to the public once again. In addition, we can also see a laterite compound that was the former royal palace north of the Bapun Temple. Inside this compound, Beside every fascinating construction so far, the Pigmianaka Temple remains standing beautifully. In the same area, the Srasrai Pond is the largest pond in this royal ground embedded with complex sculptures. Finally, when leaving the royal palace through the eastern gate, it will lead you to the king's battlefield tent where today it is called Terrace of the Elephants. According to the stone inscription number K292 that is engraved on the main doors and the window frames, inscription specialists suggested that the writings are actually military oath made at the start of the 11th century during the period of King Soyavarman I. Fascinatingly, Opposite to the Terrace of Elephants lies a route that will lead to Angkor Thom City Victory Gate. Finally, the spacious plain in front is used for soldiers, people, or massive gatherings. <laughs>